Hello there, everybody, and welcome to a new Plug and Groove quickie video. My name is John Skippy Limcool, and this is quickie video number 11. My goodness. I keep getting hopping numbers, isn't it? Um, this one is kind of cool. We're going to be taking a look at Absinthe 5 again, and we're going to be doing some programming from scratch. Uh, initialize patches, trying to make something cool, and see what we come up with. And hopefully you learn a few things along the way. Tomorrow I'm going to do another quickie video on Absinthe 5 as an effects monster because its audio processing capabilities are really powerful and you can do some really cool things you should be knowing about and I'll show you the patches that I've made for, for the power pack. Um, but before we get started with that, let me just say just a couple things. For one thing, make sure you please go to the website pluginguru.com. Oh, I need to get back to my home page. And uh, this is where you find the power packs that I've created. This is where you find the videos on the quickie videos. Uh, quickies one, two, three, four. I actually was able to make longer videos than YouTube could make at the time. Make sure you come to the Facebook page and subscribe if you're a Facebook person, which most of you are. Um, I list all sorts of stuff, including new music. And if you guys don't know about Feed Me, you got to know about Feed Come to the website. There's all sorts of cool stuff here. And one of the persons there, Chuck, asked, what do I do? What power pack should I get? Because for those of us that own the Core 2 player, we got an email that basically says that they're going to stop support and we have until July 31st to use this voucher that they sent. There's three codes included in this email for free uh, buying these power packs, the, the sound packs that Core makes. Um, after the end of July, July 31st. After this, you will not be able to use this voucher. So you need to use it soon. But people have asked what to get. And I will say um, of the packs that are here, my favorites are deep freak, deep reconstruction and deep transformations. It's not just like a reverb or something. It's like maybe six different effects in one preset where it's chopping it up and reversing it randomly in different places. And it's got a delay, and it's got a really cool filter, and it's got a weird EQ thing going on. Um, and they're really, really useful. Very useful on all sorts of things. So I would say those three are really useful. I am going to be getting myself, because I don't have it yet, the Reactor Animated Circuits. They don't have the right picture on the on the page here, but that's great. Uh, True Strike Tension is pretty cool. The two Urban Arsenals, if you do hip-hop or anything, a lot of the dubstep stuff is using hip-hop drums. These are really, really, really cool because they're, there's a range up in the um, middle of the keyboard where it's, you play a note and it plays a whole groove with parts playing and, and all sorts of stuff going on. And in the octave below that, you have all the individual samples that made that groove up. So you can, it's not just loops, it's actually very useful stuff and some really cool sounds in there. Again, of all of these, the, the deep series off the hook in how much fun they are to use. They're really great. And nothing else in my toolbox that can cover what they do. So maybe that will help you out. All right. So let's, uh, oh, before we before we start this, let's have an ah moment. So get ready to say ooh, ah. Here we go. Now, that short movie was created by me. I do photography to keep my sanity. Um, and I suggest to a lot of you out there to find something like that to uh, find your sanity, too, because it's great. I go hiking. I go camping. I went to the Oregon coast for three days, slept in a tent, out listening to the ocean in the background. And um, it's it just it inspires me. And then I come home and make synth patches. So go figure, you know get out, see the sky. It took me a long time. I, I lived for a long time without realizing the, the sunset. And the sunset's a cool thing to watch sometime. 
And, and the sounds are from my uh, Absent 5 Power Pack. So hope that was a nice ooh-ah moment for you. All right, so we're going to take a look at Absent 5, and we're going to have some fun. Now, one thing I want to point out right off the bat is if you are doing this, you might want to try this from the standalone version instead of from the plug-in version. And I'll show you the advantages right now. This is the standalone version of Absent 5. Um, I don't have a hook so you can hear it, but we're not going to make audio right now from it. But I want to show you something, and that is that one of the cool things in the standalone application is that if you hold down your option key, you can click on the envelopes, and you can click on LFO and effects. You can even also click on wave to see the waveform if you go into editing. And what this does is this gives you all... <laughs> Looks like all of a sudden we're in a 747 airplane about ready to take off, right? This is um, the heart of a patch. This is seeing pretty much everything that a patch can do without it being hidden in all those different windows. So now as I go from patch to patch, the envelopes and the LFO page, the effect page, you can see what a, the, the sound is using. You see what effect it's using. Uh, so the standalone application is great to be able to see everything at once. And if you have two monitors that you can Drag this. I have two monitors, so I'm dragging these over to the other monitor now. Um, you can give yourself better spacing. Now let's go to the plugin version of Absinthe as it is used inside of Logic. So if we're going to start from scratch, we have to go new sound. I just want to step you through a couple things to make certain types of sounds that are kind of tricks, just to make sure that you uh, understand a couple things. When you initialize a patch, you end up with a sine wave. <laughs> with the kind of long envelope. If you go to envelope page, there's three envelope parameters, and that's for the three oscillators. Although right now, all three oscillators are not on. Uh, you click in this little frame to turn on each oscillator that you want to turn on. You can have up to three oscillators. Um, each oscillator has a unison mode and can play up to eight notes of unison within itself, both with a set transposed value and a random, so that each time you play, if you have random up, it's going to be random value in whatever range you set it up to be. Um, right here where it says sign is where you click to choose waveforms. There's simple waves and there's morph waves. And if we wanted to go analog, like really like we wanted to get as close to analog as we could, we choose saw real, which is a sawtooth waveform. And by default, all that low frequency noise that's aliasing, and we don't want that, so you click the little stair stepper. That, that visualizes that you've put it to a higher resolution of math for calculating the envelopes. The phase is right now set to start at the same phase point every time you play a note. And for a lot of dance synths and stuff, you want that. But if you're going for the real analog kind of thing, you don't want that. You want it to be click here and it changes to free. And now... And starting at those different places gives it a different character to the sound. So you do that and you get that analog kind of a vibe to it. Then you can click here to turn things on. And you can click to set up a filter. The best filter is the low pass filter 24. So the low pass filter 24 dB is the... The rule with editing, say I wanted to have an envelope on this. There, there's no envelope in EG intensity parameter anywhere to be seen, right? The way you do it is you go to envelope and you say new and you go filter and here's your two filter choices. And now I've got access to making a nice sloped. The green area represents the note off. So there's a nice little chiffy little when you um, look at the envelopes, there's some things here that are really powerful and you might miss if you if you don't take a minute to check them out. There's two additional tabs here that you can turn on. One is for an LFO per envelope. So not here's the concept that really makes Absinthe go into the stratosphere compared to most uh, synthesizers out there. With Absinthe, every single parameter, you could have all of these oscillators with different parameter setups. Every one of these parameters that are yellow can have an envelope assigned to it. 
So you could end up with an envelope list that is huge. And each one of those envelopes has the ability to have an LFO as well as real-time control to segments of that LFO and to the segments to the uh, envelope all in one patch. So the power is crazy huge. All right, so we've got a nice slope. Now, the little, uh, the little node right here between two segment squares is where you change the waveform shape, the curvature, as you, as you would call it. You can get really nice. I'm going to turn on LFO, and how this works is crazy. Oh, you know what you got to do? In this case, something like this, I, I want to have it start at one percentage and go to another. And it does this where you have to right click to add one additional segment and then drag it up there. And that way I've got actually two segments here, but this one here is the one that I want to start with. And I'm going to have it start at zero, and then I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to bring the depth up. So now. <laughs> And not only that, but check this out. I can have the, the, the rate, what they call seconds is actually the rate. Let's have this be slow, so it's a bigger, fatter waveform, right? To here, where it's going to, through that length of time, it's going to go from there to really sick fast. And then you take this concept with a simple waveform. And then you go up here to the sine wave and change this to a more complex waveform, say something like an organ waveform. So with just a single envelope with no other LFOs assigned, I've taken what could be an analog synth and made it. And you go down here to the noise, uh, which are really cool. Get some cool break. You can make all sorts of really cool lead sounds just using LFO on the envelope segments like this. So I know some of you guys have your eyes all glossed up and but don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It's just showing you some of the power you have in, in the envelopes. So one other trick I want to show you. There's two other tricks I want to show you. Um, one of them is using not the filter, but I'm going to go down here to the ring mod because the ring mod is really great. What I'm going to do here is instead of the sine wave, two things. We're going to click here, set it to transpose. So now that it here's without. Go to the waveform, you can change. And if you go to noise, sounds totally messed up, right? Well, let's take it back to Hertz and I'm going to show you a cool trick. So the sine wave is going through the ring mod that's a noise and it's set to a Hertz that's pretty high. And I'm going to take it down. Still sounds weird, right? Here's where the magic happens. Once you get below this point, Ooh. what's that? The noise is now being broken so far apart, it's playing back slower. And it becomes this really cool. Almost like a chorus. So there's a cool trick for you to play with. Try different waveforms. It has to be a very complex waveform. Either that or else if it's if you use something like mid buzz, you'd have to take this up higher in hertz. For some reason, it's not the same as the noise. The noise has a cool frequency to it. We take it down really slow. So there's a trick. 
And then finally, actual true white noise. There's no white noise generator here. So if you set the oscillator to a noise and the ring mod to a noise at a higher fridge. Here's ring mod, here's the noise oscillator by itself. Not very good noise. But if the if the noise is being multiplied into a ring mod of noise, you can get really cool noises. All right. So now we're going to go new sound and let's have some fun. There's all sorts of synthesis methods we're going to use to start with sample for this one because we're going to use that new sample that I created. So we go over here to Dream Stasis, set to stereo. We want this to be rhythmic. And so I, if you want, you can go to the envelope and just go to amp A and click and drag to make it really long. And if you click here above the envelope and, and you drag, that's how you magnify the envelope to be bigger or smaller so you can see more. And this is an important place to show you one thing also, which is here, polyphony. Let's set it to 12 notes, or let's say 10 notes. And when you uh, increase polyphony, it gets softer in volume, it halves it. So let's say 5 dB up, might need more. Look at your output here. Make sure it's close to red, but not in red, but not soft. If you need to get it up louder, you, you've got a whole lot of dynamic range to work with here. So. so let's play the filters for a minute. You've got. All pass, nice band pass. Bring up the resonance. Let's say we wanted to do that. How would you do that? Since there's no Envelope intensity, you would mean that you'd have to go over to here and say new filter envelope, right? And then you just set it set that it starts really soft and then it grows over time. There. But we want to do something different with it. So let's go over here and, um, we're going to make it match this. <laughs> so. so how could we make this match that, right? <laughs> you know, you're got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> nope, we're going to do it. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to use, let's use a low pass filter. After that band pass, it's sweeping up. I want to keep that because I like the little harmonic shifting it's doing. And let's go and add uh, release to this. And I want to go to the amp and make sure that it's got the right. Okay, okay, that's good. It's a little fast. So in that case, you know how it gets to the bottom and stops? So you just make it longer and make it more of an exponential curve and now have a better fade out tail. I wanna go new, filter two, cutoff resonance. So here we are with this guy. See where we're going? So let's go to the envelope. Now there's a couple tricks for rhythmic stuff. You can use, a, right here is where you choose the mode for this envelope, and it can be different for each envelope. Um, sustain is what it is. Release is only release with no sustain portion. Loop means that it will loop with a little red loop point that you can see between segments. And it's kind of tricky sometimes 
to get in here and have it so you're actually moving the segments and not moving the loop points. But see the red point here and the red point here. If you right click and add a whole bunch of rhythmic segments or something like that, it will loop even after playing the beginning part. It'll do that, right? Um, if you hit sync, it's now going to follow the tempo of your sequencer. And these numbers up here become important because they are the, the timing segments um, for master clock to the to your your host sequencer. I'm going to use a simple automated set here. I'm going to go generate AR pulse. And I'm going to set it to a whole bunch of beats so that it goes over here so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, I can listen to it and... Now I want to do more than that though, right? Let's slow it down. So we want to go to minimum, bring it up. Maybe that. And what right on attack. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little bit like 25 or 30. That seems to get rid of really strong pops that you might have. And then slope controls the, the shape, whether it's start it's not there yet of course we've got more to do to it so let's bring this up in dynamic range a little bit and let's turn on oscillator 2 now since I have this going so much like this I don't need such a slow amp envelope on A. So I'm going to go louder, faster. And maybe the bandpass, I want to have it start a little bit higher. And I'm going to show you something really cool. Some of these segments, I want to have it do something more. So I need to go back here and I didn't, I forgot to do this. So generate AR pulse. Not 31 steps, but let's say 8. And with loop turned on, you'll go back to there when it gets to the end of the, the, it sets the loop points here and there, right? So let's turn on grid, let's turn on lock, let's say 16th notes. So I want to add some extra pieces. So we build it up a little bit more. Range. I'm going to do one here too. And one thing we can do also is kind of cool. Check this out. You can select some select segments like this. And instead of being slope, let's have them be blocked out. So now they are actually, let's see if we can just click one at a time. They're actually like step sequences. So you can go back and forth between whether their um, segments are sloped or stepped. And if you click in one of these here, let's say the second one here, Let's change this back to be slope. Now, how can I get the sine wave to 
be more than just sitting there, just bleh, you know. It's kind of cool. Let's get our drums going so we can hear where we're going. Sorry. It's kind of kind of a cool idea, right? So we're gonna keep working on it. It's it's not something. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed at this point. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I might be embarrassed with this. Um, let's let's take a look at some of our other synthesis modes. We have double FM, ring mod, fractalize, and sync granular. Let's use I love FM and I, I know FM pretty well with this. It's basically two operator FM, very basic. Uh, you have control over each of the waveforms. The transpose is like your ratio setting. And then FM index is like the level. And and the rule for everything in Absinthe is to set the value at the highest value you want it to be at, even if you want it to be really dark, right? I want this it's still dates. I don't want it to be. But I want that brightness for the chiff, for the very beginning of it. I need that. Otherwise, you won't hear it. So now I can go to the envelope to the index. So we go over here and we say new channel B, not channel A, we're on channel B. Here we go, mod index. You say okay and boom. Turn off grid and lock so I can get really tight. Not the right shape yet, but you see where I'm going, right? It's sounding kind of belly, so I need to break it up, make it more dirty or unique, right? A couple ways we can do that. Let's go to unison. We have six voices of unison with some random, not a lot of random, but like maybe a thousand. And let's move our transpose a little bit. Ooh. See where we're going? Kind of cool, huh? So. Now, this parameter right here, that's something that I might want to automate so that I can get it nice and dark. But I also want to be able to get it bright. So instead of the LFO one, let's go to the control and um, the attack segment doesn't let you do it. I have no idea why it's designed that way. You have to right click, and luckily the the new addition keeps the slope shape. Put this here, and now you see these parameters. See how the very very attack parameter, very first one has no control parameters, so you can't you can't control you can't assign it. So slick this right up on top of it, so it's the same thing, same timing. And let's go to amp, and let's assign that to a slider. And for this, let's say 24 and say 100%. So what this means, when you go to the performance controllers page, there's now a slider. And then I can double click, call this the uh, FM uh, mod level. I still want it to be something different, so let's do this. Let's turn on a new mod and set it to cloud. And as you see, cloud diffuses it. It's like um, granular applied to sampling, not sampling, but the, the synthesis engine. 
So let's um, bring up the random for tuning. Too much, it doesn't sound too good. Still not dirty enough, so now we're going to do the final thing that will make it become magically incredible, and that's the wave shaper. Um, nah. That's kind of cool. Set this back at zero. This is not a sound that you're going to play uh, big chords with, I don't think. <laughs> it just isn't that kind of a thing. Now, if I wanted to, I could, of course, automate all these parameters to do... Like, check this out. So here's transpose of cloud, right? Envelopes. New. And this is oscillator 2 uh, channel B. B loud transpose. There it is. <laughs> and you see right here, it's got the values. In. Can have it slowly swoop down in pitch to a, an octave. I know why. Because I loaded that sample, but I didn't loop it. So let's go loop all, and now it will loop and not cancel it. I'm going to turn down the volume on the FM in. Turn down the, the input level. And I want the, the uh, oscillator B, the mod index. I don't want it to kind of, I don't, I don't want it to be. I want this to take longer to get there, so. But I want the B amp to come down in volume a little bit over time. So let's turn this on. Notice I haven't turned on the delays or any effects because I know where that will take this. And it would be really cool, but we don't want to do that yet. So let's do this. Let's use... Believe it or not, let's use a square wave. Huh? How can you use a square wave? Why can't we get him? Watch this. So we're going to go over here to new. Actually, cancel. Right here is C amp. And let's go over here. Turn it to loop. Turn it to sync. All these guys are synced, right? No, they're not synced. Well, these guys don't have to be synced. They're not rhythmic. The only one so far that's rhythmic is th that filter, right? Everybody else is just bubbling along doing their own thing. So C, loop, and then you go to transpose and say generate AR pulse. And bring the number of beats up high. I'm gonna, when you finally get this in the library, I'm gonna work it up some more and get all this. Um, it could take a while to do what I'm gonna do, and I, I this video's gotten 
pretty long already. But I'm going to assign sliders. It's like this slider here. If you right click on this parameter, you can assign it to one of the sliders over on the control page. So let's say macro 5. When you go to the performance page, macro 5 now says filter frequency. So. <laughs> Whatever the highest value is, let's make it higher. You know, I go to each of the oscillators for volume. Bring this up fairly high, and I'll adjust it in a different way in a minute. So we say assign this to controller 21. Right click to so to controller 22. Right click to assign it to controller 23. That means oscillator A volume, oscillator B volume, oscillator C volume. And now I can bring this back down. <laughs> And this transpose, I want that to be on its own knob. Let's say 27. You can see there's a, a whole lot involved uh, to making a patch like this. And we got kind of carried away. I, I wanted to show you a little bit of different things it can do. So I think I'm done. <laughs> Um, I'm going to call it stops right there. When you get these patches on Friday, this will sound a little bit different than it does now. Um, just because I'll clean it up some more and maybe refine its concept a little bit more. Let's let's come up with a cool name for it. So let's name it as... Um, uh, what would this be? It's kind of a lead. Well, let's call it BPM. Anything that follows tempo that's got a set sync tempo field to it. I put down here in the BPM section. Let's call it lead uh, dream stasis. So this is the dream stasis as a lead sound. So. there got a little bit more to do to it but there you go all right so come back tomorrow or maybe the next day it depends on how long it takes to render and get up but we'll have the next one on the effects section soon so thanks for watching thanks for being a good customer and i see you later